Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hey everybody, my name is Chris and I'm the youth coordinator at the Parker campus. Today we're going to be talking about the story of a judge from the Bible. If you don't know what a judge was, they were appointed by God to help him lead his people, the Israelites. The judge's story we're going to be talking about today is the story of the judge and prophet named Deborah, who was the only recorded female judge in the book of Judges. So we're going to be talking about that, and her story is in Judges chapter 4. So I'm going to be reading that from my Bible. After Ehud's death, the Israelites again did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord turned them over to King Jabin of Hazar, a Canaanite king. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Herosheth Hagoyim. Sisera, who had 900 iron chariots, ruthlessly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. Then the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help. Deborah, the wife of Lipidoth, was a prophet who was judging Israel at that time. She would sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites would go to her for judgment. One day she sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, who lived in Kadesh in the land of Naphtali. She said to him, This is what the Lord God of Israel commands you. Call out 10,000 warriors from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulun, at Mount Tabor, and I will call out Sisera, commander of Jabin's army, along with his chariots and warriors to the Kishon River. There I will give you victory over him. Barak told her, I will go, but only if you go with me. Very well, she replied, I will go with you, but you will receive no honor in this venture, for the Lord's victory over Sisera will be at the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. At Kadesh, Barak called together the tribes of Zebulun and Naphtali, and 10,000 warriors went up with him. Deborah also went with him. Now Heber the Kenite, a descendant of Moses' brother-in-law, Hobab, had moved away from the other members of his tribe and pitched his tent by the oak of Zananim near Kadesh. When Sisera was told that Barak, son of Abinoam, had gone up to Mount Tabor. He called for all 900 of his iron chariots and all of his warriors, and they marched from Harosheth Haganim to the Kishon River. Then Deborah said to Barak, Get ready. This is the day the Lord will give you victory over Sisera, for the Lord is marching ahead of you. So Barak led his 10,000 warriors down the slopes of Mount Tabor into battle. When Barak, at, when Barak attacked, the Lord threw Sisera and all his chariots and warriors into a panic. Sisera leaped down from his chariot and escaped on foot. Then Barak chased the chariots and the enemy army all the way back to Harosheth Hagayim, killing all of Sisera's warriors. Not a single one of them was left alive. Meanwhile, Sisera ran to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, because the Heber family was on friendly terms with King Jabin of Hazar. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come into my tent, sir. Come in. Don't be afraid. So he went into her tent and she covered him with a blanket. Please give me some water, he said. I'm thirsty. So she gave him some milk from a leather bag and covered him again. Stand at the door of the tent, he told her. If anybody comes and asks you if anyone is here, say no. But when Sisera fell asleep from exhaustion, Jael quietly crept up to him with a hammer and a tent peg in her hand, and she drove the tent peg through his temple into the ground, and so he died. When Barak came looking for Sisera, Jael went out to meet him. She said, Come, and I will show you the man you are looking for. So he followed her into the tent and found Sisera lying there dead with the tent peg through his temple. 
So on that day, Israel saw God defeat Jabin, the Canaanite king. And from that time on, Israel became stronger and stronger against King Jabin until they finally destroyed him. Wow, what an epic story from the word of God. This story just goes to show that God can use anyone, even the most unlikely. God chose to use women to be the heroes in his plan to save the Israelites at a time when women did not usually have leadership roles. God loves to use the most unlikely people in his stories to do incredible things for him. Guess what? That means he wants to and can use you too. Even if you feel like you're the most unlikely person to be used by God, God wants to use you in his plans to do incredible things for him. Whether that incredible thing is to be a greeter at church, or to become a nurse, or to invite your neighbor to church, or to be a baseball coach, or to help a widow, or whatever it is. Let God use you as an unlikely person to do incredible things for him. Pray and ask God today how he wants to use you in his plans. Who knows? God may ask you to help lead people into a battle like Deborah and Barack, or to win a battle like JL did. Okay, I'm just kidding. That probably won't happen. Okay, bye. Have a good day.